Good morning and thank you for joining us on Off the Press and Plus TV Africa. I am Benny Ark and joining me this morning for newspaper review and analysis is Plus TV Africa social commentator Ekene Ezeji. Thank you, Ekene, for joining me this morning. My pleasure. Good morning. How was your weekend? It was pleasant, actually. I Very pleasant? It. Yeah, it went too quickly. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the dailies this morning with us. We have The Nation, The Punch, The Vanguard, This Day newspaper. And if time will allow us this morning, we'll take a bit of sports this morning. And the first headline in the nation newspaper, Oshimbajo, an asset, says Buhari, VP gets plotted. And that you find on page 8 in the nation newspaper. Nigeria's, Nigerian and U.S. test positive for COVID-19. And the NCDC says no new case. NCC deactivates 2.2 million SIM cards, moves to boost security. And still in the nation newspaper, show arrest trial, prosecution seeks not to shield witnesses. Confusion marks PDP World Congress in Ekiti and Makinde to sign a Mote Kumbil. APC crisis, governors take Oshomele's case to the villa. And Ganduje orders rally support as Kogi Gombe, Yobe governors join an anti chairman's group. And the National Working Committee to sanction official for calling neck meeting policemen to remain at secretariat. Nigerians shun POS transactions over charges. And lastly, in the nation newspaper, Three held for removing humans call from cemetery and Octo Nigerian beheaded. This is more making the headlines in the nation newspaper. And so, Kenny, where do we take it off from this morning? Let, let's put on the crisis hitting the APC. That seems to be a front burner since last week, a couple of days now. I mean, what, what is your reaction to all of what's happening? At first, when um, the court ruling came, there were no specific names that were mentioned about um, the National Working Committee of the APC being responsible for the filing, asking for um, the sack of Ashomele as the national chairman of the party. Then sometimes the end of last week, some names started coming out. Party members were, were talking. The NWC finally spoke. W what is your take in all of this? Well, uh, I've spoken to people who are very involved in this matter, and yeah. the impression you get is that uh, the proceedings so far are not constitutional. They're not following protocol. Okay. Um, you, they seem to be going along lines of we don't like you, or it would seem, and I'm, I'm quoting these people, that they're strategizing towards 2023. Mm. Uh, because a lot of people are conscious that whoever holds the chairmanship is basically controlling who they will put the forward presidency. as their president. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of this just sounds, I mean, it's one thing we know st people strategize within political parties, but to make it so obvious as not to follow protocol, I think we have to stop being allergic to following protocol yes. in this country or being accountable. Uh, much as you may like or not like Oshomole, you need to follow due process if you're going to make a case against him. And so far, we're not aware that that's what's being followed. You're just getting for him and against him, and yes. that's not how you, you follow. And, and some, sometime last weekend, if I, if I get correctly, on Friday, he also came out to, to give a, a press statement saying, I mean, it's some, some factions of the party, not na necessarily the National Worker Committee. But we did see the deputy chairman of the party. He also gave, gave an instruction, I mean, for Schumann not to be allowed into his office where police barricade and, and all of that. Then one begins to wonder what exactly is going on exactly. internally exactly. within the APC exactly. and if all is really well with no, no, the, clearly with the all ruling isn't party. Well. Clearly all isn't well. Um, and, you know, prior to that, of course, we were following the Obaseki or Shumali feud yes, where in we had state. childish statements like, how can you come into this my, my state without letting me know mm. first? It, it's pretty childish and no matter how they try and cover it up with all these semantics, we know that really what they're dealing with are just party tussles you know, within themselves. But th th for me, what I find a little sad is that despite the fact that they don't seem to be organized and accountable in the way they operate, yes. they will still be the party on top when all is said and done. It doesn't seem to affect the politing, you know, politics eventually. You know, in spite of the fact that they don't look very organized, you would like to think that all this behavior would count against them when it comes to the final analysis of, you know, which party will have the upper hand, yes. whether APC or PDP, even though everyone has said they're like twins. Yet I still get the impression that it wouldn't affect anything. The bottom line is APC, despite their behavior, will still have the upper hand. That's my impression. Okay. Uh, Nigerian and U.S. test positive for COVID-19 and NCDC. No new case. It's in the news all over the news this morning. No new reported case of coronavirus. Um, given the report by, by the Senate president last week saying the, the isolation center in Abuja was not ready and money, the money supposedly was already deployed to, to make sure the center was up and running. And as, as, as its comment last week, we found out that it was not ready. And Osage Henry, the Minister of Health, has come out to say monies have been given to the contractors who were meant to make sure this center is up and running. 
conflicting and contradictory statement from both parties. And one begin to wonder if really we're, we're really prepared to curtail this disease if it becomes, you know, one of um, pandemic in, yes, in, in the yes. country as it stands. I think we're just all heaving a sigh of relief that so far there's only one case. Even though for those who were saying that, um, I heard a statement made that COVID-19 is racist. It doesn't it, like, it's not it a doesn't black like man. black people. It's only black but man's now, disease. I, this is the Nigerian. Unless this Nigerian is not black, <laughs> um, we would like to now dispel that, yes. you see, I, I don't know what you'd call it, some kind of uh, I, I, an old wives tale. Every you know, COVID-19 is not a respecter of persons yeah. or race. Um, so let's not assume that we're somehow immune to it. Yes. Um, but like you said, you know, there are wins on this and somehow there's always the bittersweet thing with Nigerians. We like the way the Lagos state government seemed to have risen to the challenge. There were lots of positive uh, in indications in the, in the press about yes. how they had set up laboratories, I think several, not just one or two, and which cost quite a lot of money in a short space of time, how they had you know, shown themselves in terms of dispelling information to be ready to, to rise to the challenge. Now, you know, you're telling me that, of course, there's money, the usual things yes. that we, we so are used to. About 620 million naira, this boss, for the, for the isolation center to, to and, be ready. And yet, and yet. So this is typical business as usual. But we had hoped that something as serious as coronavirus would get us sitting up and saying, well, life matters. You know, and yet we see the people in the House of Assembly taking due care to avoid themselves. You know, they, they, they laid themselves off yeah. for a period. So I wish we would go beyond this um, narrow minded way of doing things and look at the long term, you know, because you're not going to be able to govern a country if, if people are dying yes. on you. So you do need people to govern. So why not look after the very people you say you're here, even if you're pretending to serve. So these are the kind of things that don't ent entirely encourage us. But we're just grateful for now that for so far, we only have one confirmed case. Yes, and, and for me in particular, I'm concerned about the, the, the sensitization campaign on COVID-19, which is not so much um, the, the, the much it can be right now. I consider, I remember the days of Ebola in 2014. It seemed like the National Orientation Agency is not doing so much to sensitize, enlighten, and educate the public on, yes. you know, personal hygiene. Yes. Ebola was a serious issue. Yes, it was. I mean, I, 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 I'll be careful walking past you. Yes. But there seemed to be a, a relaxed mode I with maybe it's all this, coronavirus. Uh, this, this false you know. sense that it's not going to infect the black man. Yes. But maybe we'll take this case of the Nigerian who has been tested positive more seriously, seriously. now and sit up. I think we go from one extreme to the other. Either we're too relaxed and we're saying blood of Jesus or some something that we feel will make us automatically immune, um, or we go the other dimension where we're busy wearing face masks and buying face masks, masks in bulk and hand sanitizers as though they were running out tomorrow. Yes. I mean, uh, again, let's put it in perspective. From those who I know are medically trained, we're told that the um, you say the potency of this virus has not been established to be greater than that of the flu. Um, so in, in other words, if you contract it, you're likely to recover unless you're aged or, or very young. So the people who are dying from it percentage wise is less than 1% or thereabouts. So let's not get carried away. I'm not quite sure why the whole world is panicking now. Yes. But if you put it in perspective, yes, it seems to have spread. But in all likelihood, if we didn't have the wrong kind of management, a lot of the people who contract it will recover from it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the impression. There's been get. a whole lot of panic buying. I mean, at, um, in, in the US, UK, yes. in the UK, a yeah, few of my friends who were there, like, I mean, stock, stockpiling. Yes, like, uh, yeah, yeah. They're expecting a complete shutdown yeah, because and, of but this. But that, that's in pandemic. a sense, it's still triggering the very thing they're trying to avoid. I heard over the weekend uh, retail outlets like Tesco's and the Sainsbury's, Sainsbury, yeah. and even Asda. We're, we're sort of putting a, a cap on how much a you limit, can buy yes. a certain number of things. So they were trying to have, but the very thing they're doing is now making people panic buy because they're thinking, well, if I can't get a certain number of things, then you're, in, you're telling me that maybe in two to three days time, I'll have a problem with yes. stocking up. So I'm not sure it's working. Okay, now let's take a look at this day newspaper. This morning, port congestion, MPA moves to take over APM operations, rights companies, HQ in The Hague, 30-day ultimatum expires this week. And NCC deactivates additional 2.2 million SIM cards for improper registration. Buhari consults stakeholders decide on proposed APC NEC meeting today, and many people are looking forward to that meeting to see what its deliberations will be all about. South-South leaders back in battle or Shomale. And still on coronavirus, coronavirus crashes oil prices to $30, halves Nigeria's revenue projection. And Nigerian tests positive to coronavirus in U.S. and CDC moves to test suspected case. Ihedioa breaks out and says God will render ultimate judgment. And 63 Hattie Chairs, that's an opinion piece. Um, 
In this state this morning, Vice President Yamil Shibajo um, on his birthday celebration. Oh. Now, well, let, me, let me take your comment. I mean, we, we've not had too much of a chat about um, the Emo State um, situation here. They are finally saying, you know, um, say girls be ready. Do, do you think there was, anyone was, the, do you think here they was deprived? In, in, the, in the Imo State ruling as it stands? Yeah, at, at the time, the, the story broke that Uzodima took over. Yes. I did it, an advocacy, okay. saying that, you know, the very basis of that judgment was flawed. Um, essentially saying that, you know, votes that were suddenly recognized that hadn't been ratified by INEC themselves could not suddenly come up in a Supreme Court judgment, having already been denied in, in you know, other, other, you say, inferior courts to suddenly be recognized in the Supreme Court. And, and by the time, a lot of people, when they did the arithmetic, it, it amounted to like magimatics, as we call it, because the number of votes that if you had to accrue them to uh, Uzodima to give him the candidacy, you'd have to go over the registered number of votes. And so now there have been arguments saying that it's because they hadn't recognized them in the first place and, and things like that. But I'm sorry, you have to be seen to be doing Very what true. is right. Yes. And so because there is that discrepancy, I always felt that it was flawed. Now, what I feel sorry about is that they bothered to review it only to go back and stand by their judgment. They should have just left things as they were. I don't think they're selling us a dummy by assuming that they'd done the right thing just because they reviewed it in the first place. Yes. Um, it was always flawed. And if they were ready to recognize that, then I would have had respect for the review. So yeah, I do feel Ihedio okay. has been denied. And Buhari Consult stakeholders decide on proposed APC NEC meeting today. What do you think will characterize this, me this meeting? Definitely the issue of the suspended chairman, Adam Shmuel, we will be front burner. What else do you, do you think might be likely deliberations in, in this, in this um, um, FEC meeting? Well, I, I wish I could say I had some idea I could look into a crystal ball. I, I'm just impressed a little bit that Buhari is stepping up because a lot of times people say he tends to be laid back when it comes to, you know, a little too laid back. So whether the statement you read out in the Nation newspaper yeah. about his commending of Sibajo, Yes. And now this, I feel he's getting better advice because he's being told, look, this is the right message to give out at this time. So the fact that he's even stepping into the ring, I think is commendable. Whatever comes from it, well, let's hope. Uh, All right, <laughs> and, and lastly, this positive. morning, let's take, um, before we go to sports, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper. Power sector loses 117.8 billion naira to gas shortage. And that's on page 29 of the Punch newspaper. ASU set for strike maintains opposition to EPIS. And Italy quarantines 16 million people, battles coronavirus spread. Buhari regime, most weekend in Nigeria's history, says wow. Oye Dikbo. That's an opinion piece from the cleric right there. Mm. And pro Shomale governors plan meeting with Buhari to stop chairs removal. APC camps flex muscle over contentious neck meeting. And we must abide by party constitution, says Gumbi governor. Man kills girlfriend over pregnancy ownership in Katsina. Interesting. Biosa PDP defectors will return soon, says Diri. And University of Lauren would hold geologist certificate 24 years after graduation. Army saved me twice from imminent death, says Mackinde. And Lagos mortuary attendant sells human score to Havilies. Lastly, in the Punch newspaper, Lassa Fever Cortis killed two Undo Varsity students. Pro Shomali Governor's plan meeting with Buhari to stop chairs removal and also set for strike maintains opposition to EPIS. One would have thought by now there would have been a final resolution to the federal government ASU back and forth and it, it seems to always come up. What would you think they're not paying attention to here? Well, I, I, my impression, and I may be wrong, is that a lot of people are not on ASU's side. You know, they, they haven't understood why ASU won't toe the line in terms of just follow the, the, due, the registration because we yes. are trying to eliminate ghost workers. That's in all our best interests. So whatever else you're arguing, let's modify it. But you can understand everyone, well, I, any rational person understands the rationale behind trying to eliminate, building more transparency. Yes. So the, the arguments ASU have put forward so far, you know, in terms of preserving autonomy, for me, don't justify not at least signing up for what seems to me to be a rational. Okay. Let, let us quickly, if, in just a minute, if you will, um, a Kine Buari regime most wicked in Nigeria's yes, history. Yes, I read that. I read it. Well, I, uh, I, I perused that a bit. Yes. I think the basis of that are several things. He, he makes mention, Oyedipo uh, makes mention of the social media bill, which is getting its public hearing this Today. morning, yes. So we'll hopefully get some feedback on that. He makes mention of the rehabilitation bill. And I think he makes mention of one other thing. I can't remember what, but he's not saying anything different to what we're saying. What we're in a way, we're happy about, because I tend to feel that, yes, just because you're a pastor doesn't stop you from holding an opinion, yeah. is that he's weighing into the discussion. So I don't know if it will make them the most wicked, because I remember the Abacha regime, and I know how terrified we were under yeah. that regime. I don't think we've quite gotten there yet, but it's a measure of how bad things are at oh. the moment. 
All right, Ikene is AG Plus TV Africa social commentator. Thank you very much for joining me this morning on Of The Press. My pleasure. We'll come back and wrap things up with sports and Of The Press. Don't go nowhere. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us and still on Of The Press. This morning, we want to take a look at sports from um, Vanguard Sports and also a sports daily with us. And joining me for this is Okwe Olua Adebari, a sports analyst. Thank you, Okwe, for joining me this morning. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And in Vanguard Sports this morning, Enyumba crashed out of Cuff, Comfort Cup. And also, Nasara player slums dies during league march. LMC confirms death. Plateau Rivers win to maintain title chase. And Lobby lose ground after Pillars draw. Chelsea in a formidable victory and Man United win Derby. Sierra Leone FA debunk story on shift of Super Eagles clash. And this is in Vanguard Sports. Let, let's talk on the national player who slumbered and died during the league match. What, how do you react to this? Um, it's terrible. It's a reflection of the poor state of sports and how we take sports seriously in Nigeria. I mean, um, we, we all have emergency vehicles available at every sporting event, but sadly, after he slumped, um, the ambulance was not able to start, so they were not able to rush him to the hospital, and sadly, he lost his life on the spot. It was, um, it was terrible. His teammates were terrified. They were not able to leave the stadium for hours. They were just sobbing and yeah. sobbing and sobbing. And, you know, we've had serious issues like this in the past. We've had players just die mm. on the pitch and this is terrible we do not have that emergency service needed to take care of our athletes and to keep them alive and um, this is bad for nigeria and it's not showing that um, the npfl is growing stronger and improving so we need to do better especially when this could have been avoided this this, this it could have been could avoided have wanted, because yes. it shows that also the club they do not have they don't do the regular checks and mm. updates for their players you need to be sure that your players are physically fit enough to compete um, i mean um his physical status was probably deteriorating yeah. he was probably was not in the best physical state of mind before every match you should have a fitness test and a medical test before yeah. you are then allowed to go on the field of play because number one priority is your health so that obviously did not happen. We need to do better. I think before this, what the person that comes to mind, I don't know if there's been any other slump in, 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 in the nation on, of, of, on the football pitch with um, Samuel Okwaraji. That was, that was one person I remember last who slumped exactly. on, on, on the field of play. I mean, after his incident, have we recorded any incident prior to this? Not, with, not in the MPFL. No, okay. Not in the MPFL. Yes. I mean, after that, we were all rocked and we did certain measures to make things better for our players. But you know what? This is something that is consistent with the MPFL. When something bad happens, immediately we take measures to do that. But maintenance, consistency, it drops over the years and that is terrible. When Kanu was in Italy, when yes. he discovered that he had a hole in his in heart, his heart immediately he was taken care of. He saw the way um, his team at that time, Inter Milan, he saw the way they took care of him. And that touched him. And right now we have kind of Heart Foundation. He's trying to stop players with that ability, with that issue, trying to help them and save their lives. But we must not wait for something bad to happen. And that's it. All right. And let's take best. a look at complete sports this morning. Leicester versus Aston Villa. He and Acho I seven goal in seven games versus Villa. And in the six to recover lost ground. Man United 2 0 match, Man City, uh, Manchester is red. And also, Messi overtakes Ronaldo to set new record with goal versus um, Sociedad. And also, we have um, in complete sports this morning, Igalo, I spent my lunch money to watch mm -hmm. Man United. Interesting. Uh, um, City arch to sign Van Dijk for 200 million pounds. And Dessa misses penalty. And Raw, why I invited Dessa's Ehi Zibwe. And Black Sunday, LMC confirms death of national player, calls for autopsy. And Aguero to go if City ban or pal. Now, I, I know there are a couple of matches due to the outbreak of coronavirus that were meant to take place, some sporting activities that have been yeah. cancelled. Let, let's, let's put on those a little bit. So, straight to Italy, yes. that's where it's happening. Italy is the, the most rocked. European nation with coronavirus right now, and that yes. is affecting football. We've got some big clubs in those cities affected, clubs like AC Milan, Sassuolo, Kievo Verona. In those cities, we have coronavirus spreading rapidly. So many matches have actually been postponed till May, and some matches are 
actually had to be played behind closed doors. Last night we had the Derby Italia. It's one of the biggest games in Italy between yes. Juventus and Inter Milan. And for the first time in, a, in about 20 years, it was the first time that both teams were actually competing for the title. And sadly, because of the state of the nation, the Derby Italia had to be played behind closed doors. So it was only the cameramen and the playing officials and the players as well that were able to be in the stadium. Yeah. But nevertheless, it didn't kill the vibe of the match. Um, the match was played well. It was a title contender and Juventus won at the end of the day. But um, football matches are not complete without the fans in the stadium. Yeah. So it kind of took off the vibe a bit. I just really hope that um, Italy, they are able to curb coronavirus. And also, the Players Association in Italy have actually decided to call for a strike, which has yet to be granted because they want to secure the safety of their members, which is obviously top priority as okay. always. Okay. Okwelu Adebari, sports analyst, thank you very much for joining us on All of the Press. It was a pleasure. For more juicy details and analysis of sports, do join Udoka and Joko later on at 9.30 and keep it locked on Plus TV Africa. That's all we can take for time on Of the Press this morning on Plus TV Africa. Do stay with us. I am Benny Ark and good morning. <laughs>